Hello, this is Bern, and today I'm going to reveal how you can inspire a man to willingly open his heart and let you in so you can stop feeling like an outsider in his world and can finally experience the epic love, depth, and intimacy you've been craving for years. Hello and welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com. If you'd like to learn how to attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now to be notified of new episodes as they come out. Throughout the years, I've had thousands of women who've reached out to me with some feeling of desperation, sadness, anxiety, pain, frustration at them not being able to get through their men and the men not being able to express themselves and share what's happening in their inner world. And given that today, the type of relationships we seek are intimate in nature, which means there's a level of truth and love and companionship and friendship and understanding and depth and being seen and being heard and being self-expressed that is far beyond what any other generation has experienced, that demands that we have the skills to elicit the best from each other. So my goal in expressing how to help or inspire a man to share what's in his heart, it's not a responsibility of yours. It's not your responsibility to train a man to open his heart. It could be the privilege of a lifetime to inspire someone who already is on the path of doing that to you as a catalyst, elicit the best out of him and his capacity to go deep within you and express more to you than he ever has to any other person in his life. That's a privilege, it's not a responsibility. So, which is also why when I share the framework of how you can help a man to open up more, you need to be very, very clear that there's a fine line between you make, being the catalyst for somebody to do that and having to chip away through 75 feet of concrete and cow webs and at the end of the day not even able to see a little bit of light after all this effort. So there is a point in which this is diminishing returns. If you are doing what I'm sharing with you right now and your guy is unable to do this, I'm going to share what to do at the end, but one of the things that might be necessary is for you to move on. If you crave intimacy and your guy is unable to provide that to you and you've taken it upon yourself to be the explorer who gets him to do something that he's never done but he doesn't have the willingness to go there, then you're creating some pain for yourself. So make sure that you listen to this uh, with an open heart and that you know when the point of diminishing returns has been hit so you can make a different decision in terms of how to help him open up or how to move to a new relationship where you can get more of what you want. The first step is if you are single when you're watching this video, it's probably even better in some ways than if you're in a relationship that is very, very challenging. And here's why, because I'm going to ask you as the first step to retrain your palate and to challenge what you go for in a relationship. Here's what I mean. So many women have learned unfairly, unnecessarily, and through society and through movies and through books and through parent, parenting and all, everything, what to go for in a man. And I think many, many women are going for a version of a guy who is very strong and is very confident and kicks ass and takes names, but may not have the emotional openness that they are craving so desperately. So I'm asking you right now to start opening up to the possibility that a different type of guy than the one you've gone for might be a better fit for you. And I'm not asking for you to go for a guy who has no mission or who has no confidence, but I'm asking you to maybe go for the guy who is less overt about being super excited about pursuing you. Maybe go for a guy who is less cocky. Maybe go for a guy who is less suave in his expression, but maybe has the depth and has the heart to offer you what you're seeking in a relationship. Number two is I want you to start normalizing depth in relationships. A lot of women who have shared with me that they're not experiencing what they want out of a guy typically shy away from opening up in depth because they're afraid of scaring the guy away. They're afraid of being considered too serious. They're afraid of being considered too needy. And if you start normalizing in your relationships, in your connection with men, the depth that you're seeking, I'm not saying just talk about serious stuff, but you can't just talk about superficial stuff. You can't just talk about things that are funny. You can't just flirt. If you open up and go the distance 
and start gauging through going the distance, a guy's basically yearning, maybe this itch starts being scratched and he starts going for a little more, that goes a big way into getting more of what you want is I'm asking you as a woman who's watching and listening to this to lead the way into going for more depth, to seeking a different type of conversation, to make sure that you develop the courage to go to topics that are interesting and you're curious and hungry about that may not be the thing you usually go for, but given a chance, the guy who hears this might wake up and say, you know what, here's something else about myself that I would love to share with you as a result of you being willing to go there first. Number three is to start sharing your needs with more vulnerability. Here's what I mean. Vulnerability means that when you have a need to experience something in a relationship, to experience something out of a dating experience, and you're not getting it, sometimes the default emotion is either frustration or anger. And there's nothing wrong with frustration or anger, it's just not the deepest truth of where that's coming from. Sometimes you're frustrated or angry as a result of maybe feeling sad, maybe feeling like you can't move forward, maybe feeling unseen, maybe feeling unheard, maybe feeling dismissed. When you can go to the depth of the emotion that you're experiencing and express that to the guy that you're connecting with, when you can share things in a way where you are able to go to the depth of what you're feeling, that is not just anger, and can share that with him, that feeling, that vibration that is not just anger, might touch his fibers in his heart in a different way than the defensiveness he might just put up with if you're demanding something happen that's different from what's happening right now, that might activate a part of him that wants to share more, that wants to protect more, that wants to be there for you in ways that he's, if you're not being expressive, or if you're being expressive just at the point of anger, he may not feel the need to step into. Now, before I go into steps four, five, six, and seven, I wanna make a personal invitation to you right now. If you're single watching this, there's a high likelihood you don't understand what's really causing you to be single. You might be going for the wrong symptom instead of the root cause. And what I've done is I've taken over 10 years of helping women find love in every part of the world you can imagine and created a quiz that you can take in 60 seconds that can share with you what's the number one reason you're still single. All you have to do if you wanna get your answer is go to the first link in the description of this video. Uh, you'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and in the next 60 seconds, you'll be well in your way of understanding. You'll get a free report that shares with you, here's the number one reason you're single. And better yet, also what's the number one activity, action, you can take today to turn the tables around and start attracting the man you want. Step number four is ask the question you need the answer to even when you're afraid of the answer. Here's what I mean. Many women in their confusion with what a guy is wanting and also their fear of scaring a guy away will not ask the deep questions they're needing from their guy. I want you to develop the capacity to ask the questions that are challenging but allow him to express more, give him a chance to open up more. Even when the answer might be something you're not wanting to hear or when the answer might be, this guy can't do it. Because here's what happens. If you ask the question multiple times and the guy can't do it, you have a different decision to make than if you never get the answer because you're afraid of asking the question. Develop the hunger and develop the courage to ask questions that open up possibilities to have better conversations and to get more insight into what he's going for, even when you're scared. Number five is be present and patient in your heart and your whole body. When you ask a question that demands that for the guy to go inside and feel certain things and express certain things, make sure that you're deep into your breath, make sure that you're opening up, make sure that you're present to hear what he has to say, make sure that you're patient. Why? Because it's not going to be as easy for him, most likely as it would be for your girlfriend to answer that question. So if you become a little frustrated or if you're not fully present to witness what's happening inside of him, you might miss out on part of the answer, which uh, is the nonverbals. The nonverbals will share with you as much as the actual words themselves. Number six, need, you need to become comfortable with silence. What I mean by that is if you ask those questions that are challenging, if you take the discipline of figuring out things that normally you would shy away from and 
because he's unable to answer them right away or because he's thinking about it or because it feels uncomfortable or because there's emotions between you and him that are not necessarily fun and fluffy, you start filling up the silence with words and you start talking about something else, you change the subject or you talk more about you in ways that are not really helping him to express more of himself, you need to slow down and you need to make sure that it's better for you to experience some silence, even if it's uncomfortable, when you ask those difficult questions, when you ask him to share something that he hasn't been willing to share or hasn't known how to share, than for you to fill up the void with words that may not help your cause. Number seven, and this is so important, is reward him generously. Why? Because the guy will do in, imperfectly share things that he hasn't shared before. When you're being present, when you're non-judgmental, when you're willing to ask more times, when you have that presence of heart and body and you're holding space for him, he's going to start sharing more if he has it in him. Not everybody will, but some guys will start sharing more. Make sure that you reward him generously. Make sure that you're grateful for what he's sharing. Make sure that you guard what he's sharing with you as a secret. Make sure that you don't punch him later on with some of the things he shared uh, in a way that makes him feel even more doubtful of sharing things in the future. If you do these things, you'll come up with something. Guys will either start sharing more than they have in the past, in which case you can rinse and repeat the process, or you'll find that you're bumping yourself against the concrete wall that there's no end in sight. And there's two choices for that. If you're starting today, the guy, my recommendation would be stop, move on, connect with somebody else. If you're in a relationship, you've been married for the guy for 10 years, let's say, you have children, well, you probably wanna give it more of a chance. And the chance would be he needs to get some help. That might be professional help to figure out what's holding him back. Why is he so scared of sharing himself? If he does not get help, this is not going to change. Which means you might have to, the next route would be decide what type of relationship you want. If he can't offer it to you, then you might have to end the relationship and connect with somebody else. Hope this is helpful, useful, insightful. If it is and you want to understand why you're still single, make sure to go to the first link in the description. If you enjoy the video, click like and thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share this with a friend who needs to hear this. And fi finally, last but not least, if you've been watching my videos, listening to what I'm sharing, this makes sense to you, but you understand that watching videos and taking action are not the same thing and you want my hand-holding help, accountability, and strategy to get the connection that you want and attract the man that you've been craving in a fraction of the time, then second link in the description will allow you to apply to work with me. <laughs> Thank you so much for allowing me into your heart and to your home. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life. <laughs>